Mickey Rooney was the highest paid actor of the 1930s and 40s. He did a bit of everything, acting, producing, radio, and vaudeville. He even played Santa Claus in the famous Rankin-Bass stop-motion specials. He appeared in over 300 films over nine decades. But when he entered his final marriage, he signed a damning contract. His wife and his two stepsons left him poor when he died. Keep watching to learn why Mickey Rooney's children didn't inherit his millions. Before the Feud Joseph Yule Jr. was born September 22, 1920. He got his stage name from the Mickey Maguire two-reelers that he worked on at MGM. They lasted for over 50 episodes and were his ticket to fame. He was also a hit in 10 Andy Hard musicals he starred in with Judy Garland. He got a special juvenile Oscar in 1939. He was also nominated for a real one twice in the next five years, the youngest actor to ever achieve this feat. He rose to fame so quickly that the seedy side of celebrity lured him in. He married his first wife, Ava Gardner, at 19 and then started sleeping around. He spent and gambled recklessly and became addicted to pills and alcohol. He was also bipolar and attempted suicide three times. Mickey went back to work in the 1970s, but most of his projects were flops. He'd already been married seven times when he met his last wife, Jan Chamberlain. He was 70 and she was 18 years younger. He'd lost most of his money by then due to his reckless lifestyle a lack of residual pay, and numerous previous marriages. He had to move in with his wife and take on her sons from a previous marriage, Chris and Mark. His fortune eventually turned around, with his sons working for him as a driver and chef. It seemed like a happy family, but was anything but. Jan vs. Mickey Jan said that being married to Mickey Rooney was like a big game of chess. He called their relationship one big, joyous fight. He had a volatile personality, and she also struggled with hormonal issues that affected her mental health. He was at a low point in his career when they met, but he hit a high again with the musical Sugar Babies. She was chasing the same level of fame and tried to use him to get there. She allegedly told him not to take a part in the 2011 Muppets movie unless she could be in it too. There was plenty of he said, she said about the rest of their marriage. She allegedly scripted his phone calls, passed him notes on how to praise her during interviews, and autographed photographs for him. She claims he was the one who insisted on these efforts. That included their separation agreement in July of 2013. It included a clause that she'd appear in some of his work. They fought behind the scenes, and those close to Mickey said the altercations often got physical. He'd end up with black eyes, missing teeth, and falling down the stairs. She even confessed to his family in court to hitting him in August of 2014. That was the beginning of several serious allegations against her and her sons. The couple remained estranged and had been separated for the last 12 months of his life. She claims she learned of his death from, quote, someone from TMZ. Losing money Mickey's problems with Jan were only the beginning of his family troubles. She, along with her sons, became one of the major reasons the highly paid star died with so little money. Mickey declared bankruptcy in 96. Mark claims that Chris lied and told him his pensions would be cashed out and he'd have to keep working to get health and medical benefits. He and Jan set up a review called Let's Put On A Show so they could perform together and he booked their gigs. Chris denies this but court documents show that he owned two cars and four houses worth over $2 million while his father's home was refinanced multiple times. Mark saw Mickey in 2004 and claimed his brother was making extravagant purchases. There was another time when he saw him force his father to sign documents about future performances. Chris continued to be his manager in return for cash, but once claimed, quote, Mickey Rooney works for me, I don't work for Mickey Rooney. He even became a 49% partner in his production company, Densmore Production, in 1998. Mickey's social security payments of over $11,000 a month were put into an account that he, Jan, and Chris could access. Similar ones were transferred out. One was named Tiana, which is the name of Chris's daughter. He claims it was his father's savings account. Jan and Mickey lived in a filthy five-bedroom home until she stood up to get away from him. It was sold in 2012 for $695,000. Mark and Charlene then shut down Densmore Productions. Mark also fired all of Mickey's financial advisors. 
The one he kept on, Cindy Smith, allegedly took money from Mickey as well to fund her own business. She later cooperated in court to have her name removed from the official complaint. Chris and Jan also got connected with other people without Mickey's knowledge. Michael Schrimmer paid tens of thousands of dollars to accompany him at a dinner. Ray Willie hired him and Jan to perform at his daughter's wedding. He also greenlit a pilot for an unsuccessful reality show called The Roonies. Mark and Charlene also began selling $20,000 worth of Mickey's possessions. His juvenile Oscar alone could be worth thousands. She claims it was always done with his permission. Taking the feud to court Mickey was one of those actors known for being short. It even made him the perfect fit for a Twilight Zone episode about a man growing to an enormous size. Unfortunately, it also made it easy for his family to take advantage of him. In July of 2010, Mickey, Jan, and Chris were in The Grill on the Abbey in Thousand Oaks. He was 89 and rambled in his answers during an interview. Jan kicked him under the table. It was a public display of the serious elder abuse he suffered at the hands of his family. The public learned about the seriousness of the feud in 2011. Mickey testified before the Senate Special Committee on Aging. He said that Chris and his daughter-in-law had been abusing him. He said his son had, quote, threatened, intimidated, bullied, and harassed him, and asked that they both stay 100 yards away from him at all times. The case led to a large settlement. Chris later addressed the claims to The Hollywood Reporter. He said it was all a plot orchestrated by his brother. Mark was getting paid to be Mickey's caregiver, but had been stealing up to $2.8 million from him. When he got caught, he told his father Chris was to blame, leading to the restraining order. He also claims this was the reason Jan wasn't informed about her husband's death. Mickey's will isn't as much a matter of money because of how little he had in his final years. It's a matter of influence and truth. Who should handle his money and legacy? Who took care of him and who abused him? Jan only gets $100,000 a year as a portion of Mickey's social security benefits and part of his pension. She and Chris are using it to live on. Only one of Mickey's children got anything from his will. Mark says this is a fair arrangement because the rest of the family is in a better financial situation than he is. He's also allegedly owed $38,000 in unpaid caregiver fees. Jan says Mickey's final will is invalid because it was written, quote, under influence. Going back further in time, she says his testimony in the elder abuse trial was coerced. That's a bit harder to believe because tapes of her screaming at him have been sold for impressive amounts of money. The truth of one of the greatest actors' fall from grace due to family abuse may never be fully discovered. It's one of the more depressing stories in Hollywood history. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Mickey Rooney? Let us know in the comments section below.